All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 110. One extra little twist on 109's concept. We're still talking about multiplying decimal numbers, only now we're also using zeros as placeholders. So let's see what they're talking about there. So just a reminder, when you're multiplying decimal numbers, we don't line up at the decimal point. We're going to multiply exactly the same as when you're multiplying whole numbers. When you're all done, count the total decimal numbers in the problem, and then move the decimal point in the answer that many places to the right. So we had 36 times 5 tenths, right? Well, I'm going to start off, all I'm worried about multiplying is 36 and 5. So I'm going to start off 5 times 6 is 30. I'm going to write down my 0, carry my 3. Then I'm going to go 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 more. That made 18, right? Then I'm going to count the total number behind the decimal point. The only digit I have behind a decimal point is that 5. So then I move my decimal point over one place, park it right there, and technically I have 18 and 0 tenths. But what do we know about simplifying decimal numbers? I don't have to say 18 and 0 tenths. That's plain old 18, right? So that part's the review. But what happens when you don't have enough digits to jump the decimal point over? Like in this case, I had 25 hundreds times 3 tenths. Again, all I'm going to multiply is my whole numbers. Think of it as 25 times 3. Well, I can do that in my head. 25 times 3, 3 quarters is 75 cents. But now I count the total number behind the decimal point in the problem. I have three digits behind the decimal point, so I gotta move this decimal point over three places. And I go one, two, uh-oh, I don't have any more digits. I just have nothing right there. So write in a zero, then move the decimal point over. So I'm going to write in a zero because zero is the same as nothing. Then move my decimal point over and he's going to end up right here. And remember, if I don't have a digit in my ones place, I want to write in a zero, right? And then the last step, if you're writing those handy little jump lines, don't leave them in your answer. So I ended up with 75 thousands. The only extra concept today is if you don't have enough digits to make the jump, write in your zero because zero is the same as nothing. So let's kick it off right here. We have three hundreds times five hundreds. I'm only going to worry about the digits that are not zeros. I'm going to think about 3 times 5. Well, 3 times 5 I can do in my head. 3 times 5 is 15. And then I want to count how many digits I have behind the decimal point. There I have two digits. Here I have two more digits, right? So let's go ahead and move my decimal point over four places. I'm going to start at the end, and I'll go one, two. But now I have a whole lot of nothing, so I'm going to write in zeros if need be, because zero is the same as nothing. So I need two more jumps, so I'm going to write in two more zeros, right? And I'll continue my jumps. There's three, and there would be four. So my decimal point ends up right there, and I ended up with 15 ten thousandths. Remember, don't leave your little jump lines if you're writing them in. 15 ten thousandths doesn't need a little mess like that. 
And also, if I don't have a digit for my ones place, just going right in a zero. Fifteen ten thousandths. Let's try this one. Three hundredths times six tenths. So to start off right now, all I really have to worry about is the digits that are not zeros. So I'm going to think about multiplying three and six. I don't even have to really set this up vertically, do I? Three times six, that's easy enough. That's going to give us 18. Then I'm going to go and count the total number of digits behind the decimal point. I have two over here and one more over here, so I'm going to have to move my decimal point over three places. So I'm going to go one, two, I have a whole lot of nothing there, so I better write in a zero because zero is the same as nothing. And there is my third number. So my decimal point ends up right here for a total of 18 thousandths. Let's go ahead and get some erasing so we don't leave our messy jump lines. And the final step would be, if you don't have a digit in the ones place, write in a zero for a grand total of 18 thousandths. So, every so often they might give you a problem written horizontally that you can't figure out in your head. And just a little reminder, you want to put the number with the most digits on top because we do have the commutative property in multiplication. It doesn't matter what order you multiply your numbers in. So what do you think I want to put on top? Seven hundredths or twelve thousandths? I would probably go ahead with twelve thousandths on top and just think of it as twelve times seven, right? And maybe we can't do 12 times 7 in our head. So you would have to go and at least multiply 12 times 7, right? 7 times 2, that's going to give us 14. So I'm going to write down my 4. I'm going to carry my 1. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 more. Yeah, that gives us 8. And then I have to go and count the total number of places behind a decimal point in the problem. I got to move this guy over five places. So one, two, I am all out of digits. So zero is the same as nothing. Put in three more zeros because I got to jump five places, right? One, two, three, four and five. The decimal point is going to end up right there. I'm going to end up erasing my handy dandy little jump lines. I don't want to leave that in the answer. And the final step, as always, if you don't have a digit in the ones place, go ahead and write in one zero. Would we be able to know the name of this number? This is the thousands place, ten thousands place. We haven't had a lesson on it, but this is officially the hundred thousands place. So we have 84 hundred thousands. Try out this one, 12 times 12. Well, 12 times 12, we should be able to do in our head. That would give us a grand total of 144. And I have four total numbers behind a decimal point, right? So I got to jump over four total numbers. One, two, three. Let's go ahead and write in one zero. And finish off our decimal point jump landing right there. We should all know the drill now. Go ahead and erase your handy dandy jump lines if need be. And again, he does not have a digit in the ones place. So let's go ahead and write in a zero. 
So I have a grand total of 144 ten thousandths. Last one right now. Let's take a look. What is the area of the square? So I have two hundredths of a centimeter and I have eight tenths of a centimeter. Let's go ahead and set these guys up and get ready to multiply length times width, right? So all I have to worry about to start off with is the digits that are not zeros. Eight times two, that seems pretty simple. That would be 16, right? Count the total number of places behind a decimal point. Looks to me like I have a total of three. So I want to move my decimal point over three places. One, two, write in your zero and finish it off one more place in the decimal point ending up right there. Again, I don't have a digit in my ones place, so I'll write in a zero, and I don't want to leave any messy jump lines. So if I wrote those in, I'm going to go ahead and erase them. And I ended up with 16 thousandths. But it is an area problem, so I have to make sure it's labeled 16 thousandths. What type of centimeters do we use for area? It would be square centimeters, right? Because I multiplied two numbers, so I want to have a little 2, the square exponent, in any labeling for an answer. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want to use a scratch piece of paper for the Socrative quiz today. And good luck.